So growing up, we didn't never had a stable place to stay. We used to sleep in cars. We used to sleep at friends' house. My mom, she was real abusive. Her problem was just the drugs. She'd go in her room, you know, do her thing. It kind of messed me up. My dad, he was incarcerated. You know, he went to jail for murder. So I was 12 when I ended up in um, foster care. It made me feel like, you know, I was locked up because I couldn't go home. I just was so angry at the world. When I was angry, I used to get in fights a lot, and then it just escalated. I was incarcerated before for about two months. It was at a point where I was, you know, I could I could have been like my father. Growing up was, you know, it was it was hard. Didn't meet my dad till I was 12. Then when I met him, he was like, um, you might not be my son. My mom, she uh, was in an abusive relationship and drug relationship, so he kind of kept her away from us. Family just abandoned me, left me in the system. When I entered the system, I didn't know who they were, they didn't know me. I always picked fights, and it just started to go downhill. I eventually ended up running away. No family around. It was a park not too far from my school. I would go there and just sit on the bench and eventually fall asleep sometimes. It got so low to a point to where I just didn't want to be alive. My social worker was trying to get me to go find a home, so eventually I ended up finding a home. It was an elderly lady, but she had a teenager kid in there. The first time I met him, I thought he was kind of weird. <laughs> and as I got to know him, I'm like, he's just like me, kind of. Everything he did, I did. We kind of was like became twins. We stuck together. And from there, we became brothers. That's the first time I actually had like a family member. When you're dealing with the foster care system, there are shortcomings. Getting out of the system, most people go back to their family. Now what about for the people who don't have family that was abandoned? Because at first, it's just like, go, you just go, bye. And they have nowhere to go. So the homelessness rate is actually really high. To address the negative outcomes of youth leaving the child welfare system, we developed Stepping Stones. It provides a subsidy for their housing, as well as aggressive case management to make sure they stay on track towards adulthood. Kinnick and Kiwanti, before they came into the program, they were couch surfing. Um, and it meant a lot to both of them to be roommates in this program. And I remember my brother gave me the call and it was like, okay, this is it. You know, we back living with each other. A lot of these youth, they haven't had those father figures or those parent figures. We kind of give them that in the form of a case manager. They really made me feel like I'm not alone. The next step that my case manager was talking to me about, okay, what is your goals? So one of the things Stepping Stones does is to find what makes them tick. I've been writing poetry since middle school. I have a, a dance group, it's called Freak Squad. You know, you go around dancing, I'm a, you know, I, I want to own my own business one day, my own club. Open up a poet place where people can come in and do poetry. The next step, getting them in school. At first I didn't want to go to school. With that extra push, you know, now I'm in school. I just enrolled into college, El Camino College. And then another step, helping them get employment. The resources they have is amazing. Every week we're giving them something to job fairs. Now I'm, I'm working and um, I'm saving money. So after this program is over, I have enough money to have rent for a whole year. Credit 10, they support you, they counsel you. I end up learning how to control my anger. And they like kind of push you. I'm that guy with the pom-poms telling them, you can do it, you can do it. It helped me stop procrastinating. It's always positive, it's always real. They've stayed away from crime and they're working. They're in school. In the past election, they voted. One thing that I really got from Credit 10 is confidence. I have a daughter, her name is Journey Sanford. When I see her, I see like a little me. When I see that, it makes me happy because, you know, I try to give her all the things that I didn't have. If I didn't have the support cast after the system, I probably would not be the man that I am right now. The optimism I feel for the young people that we've helped is also tempered by the sad reality is that we turn away candidates all the time. We have a, an all-time high of homelessness. There's just so many more clients out there. I wish we could take them all. It still takes everyone to help. Crenitin helped me be independent. I'm so thankful for Crenitin. I feel great. I feel great. And I just felt like, okay, I made it out of the darkness. I got a poem called uh, In My Early Teens. Uh, in my early teens, I used to always stress, but now I pray for the best and prepare for the worst. I used to feel cursed. Back then, I never knew I was blessed. Sleepless nights, I barely used to dream of success. I only dream is when I daydream about life under stress. 
But now my favor so strong, it's covering me like a nest. I'm wearing it like a vest for protection. Catching everything most receptions in history. I'm a blessing to anybody who wanna learn their lesson. Million dollar question, is it you? Yeah, is it you?